<laughs> we've got a choppy day on our hands, right? Take a look right now. The Dow off 20 points after having rallied above into positive territory. Uh, and we have been down. Do we have an intraday chart, chart we can show everyone? Take a look at this, everyone. If you look at how the day has played out here, we were down. Have we got it? There we go. Down triple digits right around 10 a.m. So this was a significant move back up to the upside. And now we're back down. So uh, go figure, right? Uh, partly the concern is that there's a report that China, which is the biggest foreign holder of our government debt, is considering slowing or halting the purchase of U.S. bonds. Um, well, I'm not surprised, right, considering that we're putting some pressure on them regarding North Korea. Anyway, that is sparking Treasury yields to jump to 10-month highs as investors prepare for rising inflation. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, we have been, what, a decade with literally no inflation in this economy? And that's kind of crazy considering what the Federal Reserve has been doing, their aggressive policies and yet no inflation. Maybe it's time we get a little. Maybe that's actually healthy. Maybe we are returning finally to some kind of normal. Here with their thoughts, Jenny Montgomery Scott, Chief Investment Strategist Mark Lucini and Kaltbaum Capital Management President Gary Kaltbaum. Gary, right? I mean, I, I, I've been so perplexed by this lack of inflation in our economy, and I don't think that's very good when you, you barely get, you know, prices keeping up with any kind of, you know, you look at wages, they haven't seen any inflation. You look at uh, our, our society in general, no inflation. Maybe, maybe a little inflation is actually kind of good. Am I right? Uh, a little inflation good, a lot of inflation bad. I will tell you, Economics 101 should say that when you have central banks around the globe keeping rates at zero and negative for eight years and, and printing of trillions of dollars that you're going to get hyperinflation, but we haven't seen anything like it whatsoever. And we're talking about rates going higher. We're still at 2.56 yeah. on the 10-year. You still have Fed funds in the one, and you still have Europe and Japan negative. So, look, the interest rate environment is still very, very easy, and that's usually good for the markets, and it's usually mm -hmm. good for the economy, and let's hope it stays that well, way. Well, Mark Lucini, what is the harder thing to fight, deflation or inflation? Defa deflation, exactly. clearly, Trish. And, uh, Having any inflation is certainly better than the alternative. The Fed has a tool for being able to moderate inflation. It's called raising interest rates. Mm -hmm. What they fear most is having to fight deflation. And so I agree with you in terms of your opening premise, which is to say a little inflation is good because it's indicative of the strength of the economy. And frankly, markets thrive on inflation as long as it stays below 3%. Mm -hmm. and we're well shy of that at the moment. So what do you think is spooking investors today then? Is it, I mean, because I'm not surprised that China is threatening, oh, we may not purchase as many U.S. bonds. What are they going to do, right? Because we have the upper hand, and we're telling them to get their act together when it comes to Kim Jong-un. They haven't been doing as promised. We got video of them, uh, you know, selling oil to the North Koreans, uh, uh, the Russians as well, despite having signed on to sanctions, they're still trading with them. So this is all they have, right? This is their leverage. We should expect that they would do this, Mark. Sure. The eventuality of it is that they were going to start to decelerate the amount of purchases anyway. But the other side of it is, where else are they going to go? I mean, there isn't a market that's deep enough, liquid enough. And if you said, well, perhaps European bonds, certainly. But with the 10-year Japanese, or that is government uh, bond of Germany, offering yield today of one half of 1 percent versus ours at 2.56 percent, needless to say, we remain uh, the most attractive yield by far and away. So what we're seeing here is a headline that's actually a bit misleading. Leading is suggesting that they're stopping or slowing the purchases. They haven't added to their base of Treasury holdings since 2011. They've reinvested Treasuries as they've matured, but they've not expanded their holdings at Treasury. So this is yeah, not and, a new and don't phenomenon. Forget, by the way, it's just contributing. We're the ones that have to pay them, right? <laughs> I mean, That's they right. may we be the bank, the but we're the debtor in this case. If they want to get paid, <laughs> uh, you know, I had an investor suggest to me that one possibility that might actually work for us and. This is very theoretical, but I want to run it by you, Gary, is we could inflate our way out of debt. In other words, if we have enough inflation in this economy, it's growing fast enough, the dollar becomes stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger, well, all that money that we owe to China or anyone else isn't going to seem as big a deal if our economy's on steroids and the dollar sky high. Is that a, well, a hypothesis you'd consider? 
possibly, but right now the dollar is very weak, and actually it's been going down, down, down. And what we've been seeing lately is because of that, commodities have been going up, up, and up. So I'm not so sure. The best thing we can do about debt is to have government slow their spending or stop the expansion of spending every year. Simple as that. And, and that has not happened. And that is the unfortunate part. The other part of the equation is you get into the fours in GDP, the amount of money that comes into the Treasury is a heck of a lot higher. And that can start paying it down. But unless Washington gets their act together, the debt's here and uh, we're probably headed for 30 trillion bucks. All right. Mark and Gary, thank you so much. Good to Thanks, see you guys. Trish.